record on the cloud. And uh, I'd love to hear your story and just hear a few really helpful uh, tips from you because I know that you've grown with the company and that you, you know, you've, you've really done a lot this year. So I'm excited to hear from you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. Yes. You caught me at a, like stayed in pajamas for three days in a row. You're allowed. <laughs> type of you know, <laughs> Michigan winter. Um, but yes, my name is Denise. I've been a part of the company for almost 12 years. So I started when I was 26 years old. This is before Facebook, before smartphones, before GPS. Like when we talk about it, we're like, we blitzed uphill both ways. <laughs> In minus um, 30. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like we blitzed before we even knew what that was. Like we created it, you know? <laughs> Um, but I was a clinical psychologist, and so I learned about the company through my sponsor, Cami. We were in the same small group at church, and so she wrapped me, and um, I went to like a Dr. Don type night, um, like a one team one mission. I became a customer, and then two weeks later, we upgraded to become distributors, and really, I had no idea what I was getting into. I didn't have a brain cell for entrepreneurship. I didn't have a brain cell for marketing. Remember, I went to... I spent six years like learning how to work with people and how to help people grow. Like that was my heart. And so when I stepped into this business, I really didn't know if I would be good at it. I didn't really know what it was. I like to say uh, my confidence and leadership skills were probably on like on a scale of one to 10. I ranked myself at a four. Um, <laughs> I can't but, imagine though, because knowing you, I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, I was a really good follower and I was a really good, like I'm a hard worker, tell me what to do and I'll do it, but I wasn't a visionary. And so there's a lot of skills that I got to learn within the business and because of the business, to be honest. Um, but when I realized this, I think the first, the first few aha moments that I had were things like, uh, like I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's half our job as leaders is to create a space where our team goes, oh, I could do this. Oh, I could be good at this. Oh, like, because what they're thinking is good for you. <laughs> good for you. You got in early. Good for you. You like doing live videos. Good for you. You're, you know, whatever. Um, and so that's what I thought. Good for you, Cammie. You're loud and crazy. And Carla, you're a nurse. Of course, everyone's going to listen to you. And you know, so I would, um, I would look around and really wonder if I should become more like them or go back to school or learn this or that. But when I really realized that I could do this business because I like to help people grow, because my favorite thing is to pour belief, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I feel like once I really owned that, then I could do this business in a way that connected with me. And um, that's when my confidence really started to grow. And well, then you bring so thing. much to the table, right? Like you bring so much experience that people don't have, but it's yeah. different than marketing and sales. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's Brandon is an, an, a digital marketer. And so, well, he wasn't back then. They didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> back then he was an aerospace engineer, um, but he loved, he loved marketing. He loved building websites. He loved learning traffic, like how to get people to it and that kind of thing. So we really ended up balancing ourselves out really well because he would bring me all the leads, but he doesn't want to talk to them. <laughs> and I would talk to him. Like I would call leads and connect with leads all day long and book parties and do events and train and like do all the things. And Brandon was really good at keeping a steady stream of people coming our way. So we, I mean, really it was like, it, I couldn't have done it without him and he couldn't have done it without me. What a great team, you know, and that's something that I feel really blessed about. I know some of you guys on here may not have a supportive spouse, but that doesn't matter right now because eventually they will understand and they will see. I know Ryan was a little bit nervous when I first started this. He's like, just cool it. Like you're supposed to be on maternity leave. Sit down with your baby and just chill out. And I just can't. I didn't know how to do it. So Denise, can you talk to them a little bit? Because in, in our organization, um, we don't have, like, I, I'm not even in the business three years. So can you talk a bit about your journey, like your progression? Like you got into the business, you kind of found your footing, found your groove. Yeah. And, you know, I think it was, I was it a year later you went diamond? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I should really, I should go back to my reports. It's really interesting to take a look at, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think the other thing within the first three years that really kept me going was community. So community, 
is the glue, in my opinion, that really gels the team. So that way they come back when things are hard because it's going to be hard and you're going to have a funk and it's going to, so we really were blessed here to have an active local team community. And this is again, like before we really had conference calls and zooms and internet, like Facebook stuff. So we met consistently once a month and would do work days and, um, you know, team parties and stuff. But yes, it took a year to go diamond, one year or two years to go double, three years to go triple. And this is when we were making at triple, we made between 10 grand a month and 30 grand a month. Wow. That's um, and awesome. this is when we quit our jobs at four years presidential, fifth year was ambassador and eight years was black diamond. And we're coming up on 12 now. Wow. Does it feel like a lifetime? Do you feel that, do you feel like things are kind of the same or that everything has changed or, you know, like, because that's a, that's a, a, you know, over a decade that you've been yeah. with the company. And yeah. so what, how do you feel about the company now after being here for 12 years? Well, to be honest, I mean, it's one of those funny things. I've never done another company, so I don't know what I'm, um, people come to us and they're like, oh my gosh, you're so stable and the leadership is so stable and, you know, we've got such a strong comp plan and we're debt free and, you know, they let, and, and the culture, I mean, the culture is like, if I walked into It Works, I would be like, these are my people. You know what I mean? So I've always felt that way. And I've always felt so proud to bring people in because I know that they're just going to love our, our love, you know, yeah. and at the end of the day, whether they make money or not, they will be better because of their time spent with us. I know that. Yeah. So like, I think that's normal. You know, I'm like, I don't know anything else. I just think that that's just the way that it should be. Um, and to see, so the other thing that's really interesting is that when corporate started, I mean, I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is where corporate was. So Mark went to our church, Cindy went to our church, Cammie went to our church, and basically, Cammie's my sponsor, but then it's the company. Like, she doesn't have anyone. So we would get the chance to go to Mark's house and go boating on 4th of July. And, like, I didn't really realize it was, like, a team event, but she would <laughs> all of us over, and we would all go. And um, Mark was one of the first people I knew that said what he wanted and did it. Um, I had been around people who talked to the talk, but I hadn't really been around people who actually did what they said. You know, they'd be like, someday, I mean, they're complaining about their jobs, but they never left, or they were complaining about this, but they kept. So Mark was one of the first people that said, you know, we are going to come up with a new product, and they did, and we are going to move the company to Florida, and they did, and we're going to go debt free, and they did, and like, it hasn't always been immediately, but I've seen them finish over and over and over and over again. And I think that when you have, are around that, uh, number one, you've got like overflowing confidence because you know that they're going to do what they say they're going to do because they've proven that um, and they know where they're going and they've got big vision and big grit. You know, I've seen that consistently, but then that rubs off on me too. And they never said to me, Denise, you are going to be a top income earner for a decade in this company. <laughs> like they never said that. They never said you are going to be good at this. No, they never said that. They did what they did. And because they are people who have goals, who have vision, who have grit, I picked up on it. And I started to duplicate that. Like they always say, you are who you hang around. Well, I realized like, I started thinking, well, what would Mark do? And how would Mark respond to this? Or, you know what I mean? And so I feel like I uh, absorbed a lot of the qualities because I was hanging out with them, because I was going to the events, because uh, I grew in my own confidence. And I mean, now international, I mean, we were part of launching Australia. So when we quit our jobs, this is pre-children, I packed up on a Friday and on Sunday, we went to Australia for six weeks with Cammie and her family and launched as, we wrapped as many Aussies as we could. And so we were a part of that like initial growth. And it's just, I think you don't often realize what, how special that is until you look yeah. back and go, wow, like what a very cool experience. And I don't know, are you guys all in Canada? Like all in? No, we're all over. We actually all have over. an Aussie team coming to conference. Oh, fun. Yeah. 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 
So it's really interesting too, because, you know, you, I won't say luck because it's not luck. You made some, some really great decisions in proximity and who you decided to spend your time with. And uh, I've said this to the team before, you know, you happen to go to church where Mark went to church. But the thing that I love about the company is that if you work hard, you're recognized in this company. And then all of a sudden you're not even two years in this business and you're sitting next to Mark and Cindy at dinner having a conversation with them about their grandkids and like where the company's going. And all of a sudden you're just like, is this for real? Like that's what you guys have your hands on. And I don't think that there's a lot of companies out there that have their owners come in and, and like, you know, being able to know Cammie and Kinsey and like, it's, it's quite special. The, the culture that they have created and the family that they've created, because you feel like part of it, as soon as you've done the work and you've, you've earned that time you're in. And that's kind of cool because I, I think that it connects people to corporate, um, which is again, really powerful because we have a bit of a say, you know, like you and I are both on the lifers page when you're tripling above, you get to be on the, the lifers page. And then there's also an ambassador page, but you get to speak with our corporate team and Pam and Cam and you get access to people like Denise and there's no, there's nothing that beats experience. Right. So that's part of the reason that Karen and I picked up and came on the Disney cruises because yeah. we wanted to get to know you guys. We wanted to yeah. get to know different people and how they did their business. Um, so do you do your business now? Um, I know that we talked a little bit. I know that you do some Facebook ads. Like that, that's what your hubby does. Right. Mm -hmm. And just for the record, you guys, if you're ever going to consider ads, know that the only reason you do ads is to spend more money on ads right? To bring more people in and to do that. So it's, it's, it's big time and they're, they're doing it big time and they're doing it right. So other than that, because not everybody can do the spot. We didn't have that the first, you know, eight years. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what did you, so what made you change the way that you do your business? Oh, like well, I mean, we've done a little bit of everything, right? Yeah. So yeah. we started really with, um, expos and, and parties and referral programs, because this again was, I mean, my first, phone in the company was like a, a, a flip phone. Like it just, it was different. It was a different, different day. <laughs> so we did, we re, it was really belly to belly. It was a lot of parties, referral programs, expos. But what that did was it got us talking to people and building our presentations. Yep. The more that you do it, the better you get. And so we would, we would do parties and we'd say, Hey, do you know anybody that would want to, you know, you know, try a skinny wrap too. If anybody booked the party tonight, we'll give you a free wrap at that party. You know, we would do things to keep the product, like the parties going. Um, we did a ton of local expos. I traveled to different states to do expos. And all of that would be a ton of follow-up afterwards with, and again, this is like before Facebook. So I was doing a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls. And all of that did was build my spiel. And what you'll find is that most people ask the same thing. Yeah. So then once you are confident in your answers and you know what you're talking about, essentially, you don't have to know everything, but you just need to know the answers to those couple questions. You can just get better. So my close rate got better because I was talking to more people and I was developing my skills. And, and then let's see, over time, I mean, we also ranked on Google. So that was a big part of it too. Brandon did his thing. I don't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but we got Google traffic <clears throat> and then Facebook came and I was honestly triple diamond when Facebook started and I used it only for groups because I did not understand it. And so we had to learn like, Oh, we can use Facebook to get people. And Oh, this is how you post on Facebook. And Oh, this is, you know, you don't just say eating dinner, you know, right, <laughs> so right, right. Christina's like, eating dinner. I know we had to learn all of that stuff and things have changed so fast even since then. So then Instagram started and we're like, Oh, great. Whole nother thing to learn. And then lives. So we've just always had to be evolving because if we, you know, we want to stick with our strengths, but we always want to be like three steps ahead and evolving in our business. So so we still do a little bit of everything. There'll be times where we'll do a local, not often in the winter, but we'll do like a local ad and or networking in, in Grand Rapids area to book parties, to book people that we can do rep appointments with. So, so it all really does come full circle. And I feel like um, we can, and we do kind of mesh internet and belly to belly together quite a bit. You do all the things. All the things. All the, and you kind of have to, to figure out what you like. Yes. Because there were times where I was taking Confienza 
and like listening to Eye of the Tiger on the way to expos and like trying to psych myself up. <laughs> um, and, and you just, you learn, you learn what you like. And then once you figure out what you like, then you can do it a lot. Yes. And then, I mean, people would ask me, what do you do? And I'm like, here's the deal. I just have a system and I do it a lot. Like it's nothing crazy. We generate leads. We follow up with leads. We do it a lot. Yeah. You just do it a lot. You know, I love that (laughs) advice. I honestly, it sounds so silly. It's so simple, but it is when people ever like people come to you and they want more results. We just do more. We just do the things more than most people. And that's why we have bigger results. It's nothing. It's no secret. No, nothing. Right. Um, You know, Denise, one of the things too that I love about you is that you have so much to give and because of your background, you're so great at developing people. So can you, there's a lot of leadership on this, on this call. And, um, we find like the, the show me the money calls are really, really great, but what about that next level leadership? And I know that you have a pretty incredible podcast that I'd love for you to talk about and, uh, and your new book. I'd love for you to just, just touch on a bit if you were okay with that. Yes. Okay. Um, And you know what, this is, so part of the first few years are really figuring out, okay, what can I do? How do I do this business? Because I don't even know if I'm going to be good at it. And I don't even know if I like it. And I'm trying to figure out if I can do this. Well, eventually you go, I can do this. Oh my gosh, I like this. This is fun. And this is, you know, whatever. And then you have to figure out how to duplicate it. So then I had leaders on my team who were like, I want to learn what you do and why you do it. And I was like, oh, that's, that's a good question. So, <laughs> so we started doing leadership calls. Basically, I was doing personal development and teaching them personal development. Why? Because they weren't reading, you know? And so I was doing a lot of growth myself and learning and teaching and learning and teaching. And even if they were doing their own personal development, I was three steps ahead because I'd been in the business a bit longer. So I was able to kind of take them through my own experience of, can I do this? What am I good at? What are my strengths? Um, That's me reminding myself of invest, learn, teach. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Like learn and teach, learn and teach, learn and teach. And if you have, if you have nothing to teach, then you got to learn, right? Because we're always trying new things and figuring out what's working and, and teaching it to the team. So I could take, I began to take them on a leadership journey of who am I and am I good at this? And what, how do I work with people and how do I duplicate and raise up leaders? And I just, so for several years, we did leadership calls um, with them to say, because it's not about how do you do a party at that point, you know, right. it's really about how do you keep yourself filled and overflowing so you can help and in, I don't like the word help. It's means so many different things to different people, but so you can invest into your own teams and, and you guys, once you feel like you've got something that works and you feel like, I mean, I mean, as soon as you experience any sort of success, Christine, I'm sure you've experienced this too. People start saying, what do you do? What do you do? Tell me what you do. If I were a fly on your wall, what would you do? I don't, you know? And so over these past, um, over this past year, I've created some materials that I feel like this is what I do. And this is, this is the secret sauce essentially, which is, knowing what you want and, and going after it a hundred percent. So the, the podcast started, um, because I was like, I want to add value and still pick up my children from school. How can I add value and still pick up my children from school? And remember, there's some people on my team I've been talking to for eight years. Like, I, I mean, obviously I still work within my team, but they've already heard me. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, how can I expand my reach? And I know there's people that are outside my team and within the whole company and even not networks that will benefit from this material. So the podcast started as a way to add value in my own time because you can only touch so many people in one day. And I, and I, you know, I want to pick my boys up from school at three. And then I also wrote a book called design your dream life. That's coming out in May. And that has been its own growth struggle. Like, I feel like the glass ceiling and I'm like, like, (laughs) but what happened is I wrote it and then I got it edited and I got it designed and essentially the book combines science scripture and stories. So it's the quantum physics, epigenetics, um, and the scripture that connects it all. And then my growth stories throughout it, but it also has exercises. 
because at the end of the day, I know that we, most of us know what to do. We just don't do it. So I make you do it now. <laughs> and so <laughs> the workbook, yes, that's what the cruise is all about too. We're like not talking theory. We're doing it right now. Um, and so we did like the workbook um, essentially is that it's, is, is that it's like a whole 360 degree. Who am I? What do I want? What are my gifts? Um, what's stopping me? What am I holding on to? Letting go of guilt, resentment, anger, bitterness, fear, like working through some of that and then really designing and crafting your dream day and the tools to actually go do it. So, but what happened is that I got it back and I had to end up redoing the whole entire thing. And I say that because it was tens of thousand dollars gone. It was a year and a half of my life like wasted, right? Um, but at the end of the day, I, I say those things because you guys often see the stage, right? You see the finish line, right. um, but you don't necessarily see the grit, the tears, the vision that we have to hold in front of us so strongly because it's so much easier to quit. And it's so much easier to watch Netflix. And it's so much easier <laughs> to just be like, never mind. Holy cow, this is a lot of work. Um, so what I've had to do, not only in my works business, but in this, these last two years is to hold that personal vision so strong that it kind of pulled me through the hard times. And um, I'll mention the exercise that we did on the cruise was for letting go of guilt and resentment. We wrote letters, which was by far the favorite part of dream space, like Good. by far. Yeah. And it's so, so powerful. And one of the reasons why we did that is because what's interesting is I had been holding on to some resentment um, during the years that it wasn't working. Like I was like the designer, I'm mad at you. Like I had a team member leave and I was like hurt by it, like emotionally, like I felt like a breakup, you know? And so I was holding on to stuff and I did those exercises myself this past year. And I finally talked to my friend and I said, you know, that, that was really hurtful and I'm really sad. I'm like, I miss you. Yeah. And, you know, I just like did the things that, and, and I said, I forgive you. And this huge weight lifted off my shoulders that I didn't expect. And within two weeks, I was connected to a team of people that are going to redo design your dream life. And we got the journal out in a month. Amazing. We have another journal coming out in May or in March, because we know this is kind of a consumable thing. So it's a one percent different. Um, like the gratitude games are different and things like that. So another journal in March and then the big book in May. And like, I don't think that that stuff would have been brought into my path if I had not released. Yeah. And I was like, I should have forgiven you a long time ago. <laughs> it's hard but sometimes I, though. It's hard when we're hurt. It is. And, right? and, it, and grief takes time. It just yeah. is a part of, it just is. Like grief is a thing that we have to work through. It's not necessarily a one-stop shop. So we've got onion layers that we have to peel back and identity things that we have to like work through. Um, so if anybody on your team ever says things like, I'm doing all the right stuff, I'm doing it all right, but it's not working. One question to ask, is there anything that you might need to let go of or heal through? Because I can tell you, when your head and your heart don't match, it doesn't work. And, and when we were going Black Diamond, my head said I wanted Black Diamond and I grew in my belief to hit it. We did the Come As You Will Be party in 2015 where we pretended like it was the year 2025. We had to evolve into who we wanted to be. We talked about it like it was happening. Like we did all this work to increase our belief and that's the year we went Black Diamond. We tried for three years. That's the year we went Black Diamond. Mm -hmm. But in this situation, I knew what I wanted and I was like dead set on it. It felt like when you're trying really hard and you're like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but my emotions were three steps behind. Right. And that's when it wasn't matching. And I really had to heal and work through that to be in alignment from my head to my heart, my, my, my vision and my belief to really match up. And that's when magic can be made. And I saw the how show up way more than expected. Um, and I'm just like, so, I mean, the support, huh, like, I just feel so much love. Whereas a year ago, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I, you know, we all have different stories, but you can ask yourself, does my vision match my belief? And if your vision board, your goals, like makes you anxious, 
or scares you, then it's okay to, to tone it down. Like a new distributor saying, Hey, I want to go ambassador. If their belief is, yeah, right. That's going to happen. Then change your goal. Make it be executive. Like call your mom, like step one. <laughs> um, but, but it, so it has to, it has to align. So it's okay to kind of say, all right, well, do I believe this? Okay. Now you want it to stretch you of course, but you also want to believe it. But for me with, um, with Black Diamond, there wasn't a next step for me. Like I had, I had, and we had hit it almost for two years in a row. So I knew it was possible, but I had to really grow my confidence and grow my belief itself. And the same with this book series that's coming out. Like I had to really let go of relationships that I was tethered to and I didn't even realize it and, and kind of release that. So the how could show up. And within two weeks, a house showed up that I didn't expect and that I wasn't even looking for. And I think that that's how it works. You'll find people at the last day of the month sign up and order a $400 worth of products. And you're yeah. like, why, hello, new best friend. <laughs> but that the how can only show up when your head and your heart align and you're taking massive action towards it. And then all of a sudden, these things are just going to line up in your path. And it must be really like you can't say your head and your heart is aligned but not really be all in right like you can't yeah. really say, because I know that that kind of held me up for a little while like I know that this is my year for ambassador but for a little while I was like really 50,000 that's a lot of money like that's more money than I ever thought I could make but instead of thinking that in my head I now walk around the house and say to my husband you know, we're going to be millionaires, right? Like, you know that we're, we're going to be millionaires. Like, this is so cool. And we're going to have that place on the lake and this house is going to be paid off in a couple of years. And like, we talk like that now. And that was something that we had to practice, especially with my husband, because he's the one that reels me in. But you know, that's something that we had to like practice and start saying out loud until we started believing it. And here's when you know that they're in line, you start to get excited. Yes. Instead of scared or instead of nervous, you get real freaking excited. <laughs> and you don't, you don't entertain any other option. No. It's like I had, I had, I became a professional ignorer of anything that didn't line up with my goals, but also like emotionally too. I was a professional ignorer of anything that didn't serve me. So if somebody said no, I didn't care. Like I was like, well, keep going. You know, like I didn't, it reminds me of Care Bear Stare. <laughs> you know, it's like your emotions like have to, they're like, we create what we command and it really comes out of here. So you can say you want something, but if your emotions are saying that you're fearful or that you don't believe it or the whole, yeah, right. Like I went through that myself or, um, my story was nobody is here to support me because my friend left and my designer sucked. And now, you know, like, all these things. But once I started telling a new story and my emotion, it, it, you do, and you have to be all in because you're emotionally have to be all in. And I just, I'm so grateful, Denise, that you came on here with an open heart and were vulnerable and shared with us honestly what you've been through because we've all had friends leave. We've had people leave that we didn't think we're going to leave or people stop returning our phone calls or, or that kind of stuff. And, and it really is the, the personal development that you've done over the years or the stuff that we're all working on to have absolutely no attachment to that outcome, to know, to have so many leads and be so excited with all the work that you're doing that if that person says, no, okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Like keep going, right? You just yeah. kind of keep going with the groove. And I think that, it's so powerful to have someone because you're right. We see you on stage, black diamond. Oh my God. There's Denise Walsh. Like, Holy cow. She made it. Right. But I don't know if you ever really feel like you fully made it always like, okay, there's something else or there's something new. There's a new dream. And that you went through all the things that we're doing right now. You just didn't quit. You just didn't give up. You just didn't stop. And I think that's why I'm so excited about all of this stuff because I'm like, I've experienced it all, man. <laughs> yeah. I really, I feel, I mean, I'm sure there's things I haven't, but I really gone through fear of success and fear of failure. And what if it falls apart and what would people think? And my brother, who's a lawyer said, Oh, this is a pyramid scheme. And like, I've been through all of the things. Um, and, and I've just had to grow through it. And so I feel like when you you know, it's like when you learn something, you're like, oh my gosh, everybody needs to know this. And so that's what these materials really are designed to do, to give the, the, um, 
the skills, the success skills, essentially, to build those muscles yourself. Well, I appreciate you going above and beyond for not just your team, but for the company, for people that you're connected to, because the tools that you are introducing are things in leadership that are so valuable, so valuable. And I know that our team, um, you know, is very grateful for you and, and all the hard work that you're doing because you're doing this on top of your business. You know, we, we hear people all the time. I work a full time job. I got kids. You got kids. You got a hundred thousand dollar a month biz plus business plus a podcast plus you're writing a book like you are amazing and i don't think people tell you that often enough because i know that it can be a little lonely at the top so just know that we are so appreciative of everything that you do thank you for your time tonight denise um is there anything that you want to leave them with uh just before conference <laughs> you knew what i knew oh my gosh <laughs> Yeah, so there's a couple things that they're announcing that they've never announced before that are going to, they're going to be game changers, meaning that you guys are like promotions are going to happen much faster. And it's not, it's not simply a bonus. It's not like a carrot, you know, like there's, there's things and shifts that will help you promote faster, which are going to be really, really exciting. So yeah, Christina, like ambassadors in the bag, you know, like ah! it's happening. It's like done, sealed, <laughs> delivered. Now it's just a matter of when, right? Right. Um, so for those that are going to conference, just soak all in the energy. Remember what it feels like to be there because you'll have a down day afterwards and you want to kind of put you, I mean, you just, that's the skill, right? Is to remember why you got started and remember the good days and all of that. And then talk to as many people as you can, because really this is a great community and people want to, um, to give hugs and give, yeah. you know, take pictures and all of that. So, so say hi to everybody. And then I will end with, um, and I declare if that's all right, this is how I end a lot of my team calls by Joel Olstein. He is, if you can see it, I don't know. There you go. There he is. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, when I was going through, like what's really not funny, kind of funny, is that when we went Black Diamond, it was the hardest personal year of my entire life. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? I was like, excuse me, we're about to go Black Diamond, please don't. <laughs> so what we did, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, um, you know, I had to compartmentalize. I had to be like, I'm working my business now. I've got to, you know, I'll worry about that later. You know what I mean? And you just have to do it because there's no other option. But in that time, I created a war room down in my basement. It was in um, our extra bedroom. And it was here that I really learned this head heart connection because it was here that I was like, like claiming victory when I didn't see victory. You know, I was like claiming all of this stuff when it wasn't in my current reality. And even Black Diamond and new leaders and all of this stuff. And, and so um, Joel Olstein was a big part of that because what he's so good at, if you don't know him, he's like a con consistent cheerleader. And we talk about, you know, the scale of like fear and faith. Like he speaks faith and life like nobody's, like it's his job and he knows it. And so that's what all he does is like speak faith. And so when you're in that fear-based mode, like I listen to him all of the time because it helps bring me back. So anyway, at, since then, these are the things that I speak over my team and that I speak in my war room, and I will end with that. Thank you. I declare God's incredible blessings over my life. I will see an explosion of God's goodness, a sudden widespread increase. I will experience the surpassing greatness of God's favor. It will elevate me to a level higher than I ever dreamed of. Explosive blessings are here. This is my declaration. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. That's so kind, Denise. We appreciate you so much. I cannot wait to see you in a few days. I'm so excited for everybody that's coming. And uh, again, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I know it's a really busy time of year. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in a few days. As long Bye. As aren't snowed in. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right. See you guys later. Bye.